We turn to the first big new film we're covering this week, and that's Happy Gilmore, the new comedy starring Adam Sandler of Saturday Night Live. Sandler plays a crude, blue-collar kind of guy who's always dreamed of playing professional hockey, and one day, while kidding around with some moving men, he makes it clear that he thinks that golf isn't a tough enough sport for a hockey-loving he-man. Sorry, ladies, I'm not the golfing type. I'll tell you what. You hit a ball past my ball, and we'll go straight back to work so you can watch your precious hockey game. <laughs> Give me the stupid club. <laughs> Look at this stupid thing. This is gonna be hilarious. <laughs> Look how he's standing. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> Go back to work. That house is like 400 yards away. Is that good? That's unbelievable. Beginner's luck. 20 bucks says you can't do it again. Bring it on. You better pay up. Oops. Well, Sandler becomes a sensation on the professional golf circuit, but he still needs just a bit of work on his putting game. He's on the 17th green right now, having a little trouble closing out his day. Happy, the ball itself has its own energy, or life force, if you will. Its natural environment is in the hole. So why don't you send him home? His bags are packed. He's got his airplane tickets. Bring him to the airport. Send him home. <laughs> send him home. I just send him home. Time to go home there, ball. Oh. Oh, son of a ball, why didn't you just go home? That's your home! Are you too good for your home? Somehow I don't think this is going to be an Oscar contender, nor is it a significant ornament to Western civilization. However, with this kind of comedy, I always ask, does it pass two tests? Number one, the laugh out loud test. And I laughed out loud several times for Happy Gilmore. Number two, there's a squirm test. Is it so boring and so predictable that you start shifting in your seat and checking your watch? And I didn't. I enjoyed the thing. It was handsomely shot. I think Adam Sandler is quite funny, and he has a terrific supporting cast. It's an enjoyable, little, mindless comedy. Well, I make up my own test, Michael, since you do it that way. I, I find, do I laugh? No, I did not laugh here. Not at do all? I think you it's didn't laugh at those clips? Talent? Yes, I do, and that's all the more frustrating. Adam Sandler's characters that he did on Saturday Night Live, namely Opera Man, he has other characters like Fatty McGee and a CD. They are hilarious. It is so frustrating to see a movie where there is not one laugh other than where he punches Bob Barker in a fight scene. It is one joke. It is done over and over again. That it is so silly and stupid and mindless. I don't know who the audience is, and it's so frustrating it's, it's, to see his re talents go to waste. It really is better than that. I, don't, I will say that I have never been a huge fan of a game of golf, and maybe that helped me to enjoy this, because it sort of I. deconstructs golf. Oh, not really. But, but the truth is that uh, Christopher McDonald is in this picture. He yeah. plays sort of the reigning golf pro. He's very funny. He does a lot of gestures, creates a character. There's a terrific newcomer named Julie Bowen, who's a soap opera star, who plays a love interest, who is, as they say in Hollywood, eye candy, is great to look at, and is very credible on screen. And she plays well against Adam Sandler. So far, he has a bit talking, with his grandmother. You've spoken about everybody except Adam Sandler's character, who is not funny and not believable. And the you fact know, that he can hit a ball 16 miles is the only joke in the movie, and it's they, repeated they, they ad do it, they do it's not They funny. do it so well with great special effects showing those long drives. Look, we can't and the whole thing is sort of sunny Look, and cheerful comedy and is totally subjective. inoffensive. And enjoyable. Okay. We'll agree that comedy is subjective. What makes me laugh may not make you laugh, and vice versa. I just found Adam Sandler much funnier than the material here, and, and there was no screenplay. And it was limp and just a And waste I think of a lot talents. of Americans are going to be laughing and enjoying this it. This one gets Gilmore. a bogey, Michael. Well, <laughs> now we turn to City Hall. That's a very different film. This is the new thriller starring Al Pacino and directed by Harold Becker. That's the same team that worked together on Sea of Love a few years ago. Now, here, Pacino plays the mayor of New York, who's trying to cope with the aftermath of a tragic shooting in Brooklyn, which claimed the lives of an innocent bystander and a hero cop. John Cusack is Pacino's deputy mayor, who here meets Bridget Fonda, the lawyer representing the family of the dead officer. I'm Mary Beth Cogan. Detectives Endowment Association Legal Affairs Co-Counsel. Very nice call. I represent Detective Eddie Santos, and you're muddying my client's name. Take up the matter with Corporation Counsel. What, and get it buried? No, thank you. Aren't you supposed to be the pipeline to the mayor? You should tell him somebody's taken him up the wrong uh, street. This is all very interesting. Maybe we'd explore it in more detail, maybe over some coffee or something. I'm talking about a hero detective and his widow's pension. Why don't you wait in my office? I won't be but a few minutes. No, I don't think so. No, you have my card. I'll expect to hear from you in the morning. 
Danny Aiello plays a charming but corrupt political boss in Brooklyn who meets with a crooked parole officer to try to cover up the fact that they've both been influenced by the mob and both contributed to decisions that caused the tragic shooting. I don't want any damn Okay. okay. So what is it? Get the deputy mayor off my back. Shrimp boats? Him, yeah. And you couldn't handle him? It was easy. That's what I'm saying, it was too easy. Don't throw bouquets at me. Don't please my folks too much. Don't laugh at my jokes too much. People will say we're in love. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell was that? Well, Milt and I are great Rogers and Hammerstein fans. When you walk through a storm, keep your head up high, Larry. It's not your signature on the probation report. Then watch your mouth. As Cusack pursues his investigation, yeah, the chain of evidence leads closer to the office of the mayor. Do you think that's wise? What's wise got to do with it? Because the perception is going to be... What the hell with perception? Perception? Menschkeit! Stuff between men. You know, the there, that's there. A thousand telephone calls. The bouquets and the brickbats. A space between a handshake. You know, stuff that goes with you to your grave. A space between a handshake for right and wrong? Why are you pressing me tonight? What's up? I'm looking for an answer. You want an answer? Okay, Pappy. Think of it as colors. There's black and there's white. And in between is mostly gray. That's us. Now, gray is a tough color because it's not as simple as black and white. And for the media, certainly not as interesting. But it's who we are. Well, who I am is a native New Yorker, the perfect audience for this movie, Michael. I knew who all the characters mm -hmm. were based on. I liked the powerful performances by most of the actors. And in the end, I like this picture. I found it absorbing, I found it powerful, and it gave, gives, you, gives you the sense of the impossibility of governing any major city. So it worked for me. Well, it does give you that sense, and I think that Pacino is very good in the movie. Danny Aiello is even better. Yes, he is. But it can't save this script. That's the whole problem with it. And the script really raises the question, is it possible to have too much literary talent on one movie? This film is co-written by Ken Lipper, a former deputy mm -hmm. mayor, by Nick Pileggi, who did Casino and Goodfellas, by Bo Goldman, who did One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest and Scent of a Woman, and, and also by uh, uh, Paul Schrader, who did Taxi Driver. But each one of these screenwriters seems to be trying to upstage the other by giving showy lines, stilted lines that look like they're written on a page. Everything you say is true, and too many cooks can spoil the pot, but this pot, I think, isn't quite spoiled. There is still a taste here of what the city life, what how every day a different crisis can move a politician in a completely different yeah, direction how to get anything done you've got to make deals and compromises that's what that's, this movie that's, is that's about. a simple and an old story that's yes, been told better before yeah, yes, and you say about like a, a new crisis one of the things i didn't like about the film is the whole plot seems very contrived almost like a tv movie where just as they're getting to a crucial uh, witness and it happens several times he's killed the moment before they get to him and then bridget fonda's performance was terrible she sounds like she's reading well her it's first a very small underwritten cards. role the script does have problems but danny aiello gives an extreme extremely powerful mm -hmm. performance, a very complex politician based on several politicians uh, who, who, who are involved in corruption. I think overall, all the problems you say may be true, but it gave me a sense of what life is like governing a big city, any city, and I hope people go to see it. Well, our next film is French Twist. This is a French sex farce with a lot of twists and turns starring Victoria Abril, who rose to fame in movies from Spanish director Pedro Almodovar. Abril plays the wife of a yuppie businessman she thinks is a good father and a faithful husband. But all the while, he's spending his afternoons and evenings in affairs around town. And one day, her husband's best friend accidentally blurts out the terrible truth to her. Quel coup à droite et à gauche Le, 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 La fois où tu l'as surpris Ne réponds pas pour une idiote, Antoine. Tu as dit des coups à droite et à gauche. Il m'a trompé, c'est ça Et tu le savais Avec qui 
Il y avait qui, il y avait qui, il y avait personne. Oh ben c'est pas grave, Loli. Bon, une ou deux fois en passant, parce que c'est un homme et qu'il a des besoins. Mais je sais rien, Loli. Et, et puis c'est pas mes oignons, merde. Mais, mais, mais t'es folle, Loli, ou quoi Tu es son meilleur ami et ben tu es un beau dégueulasse. Vous êtes deux beaux dégueulasses. Alors maintenant, tu vas me raconter ce que tu sais parce que, parce que, parce que je pourrais être le bide, moi. Je peux rien, c'est le boulot. To get back at her unfaithful husband, Abril befriends a lesbian free spirit, played by the film's director and screenwriter, Josan Balasco. Je voulais vous remercier de votre gentillesse. Vous avez été hyper sympa, tous les deux. C'est ma femme qu'il faut remercier, moi j'y suis pour rien. Il y en a d'autres qui auraient fait la gueule. C'est pas mon genre. Ah, au fait, vos, vos cigares. Bon, allez, à tout à l'heure, Minou. Je t'attends pas pour dîner. Euh, mieux pas. Très bien. Vous restez dîner ce soir Bah, c'est-à-dire, euh, je veux pas déranger, j'ai tout ce qu'il faut dans ma caisse. Non, vous dérangez pas du tout, au contraire. Et Laurent Très bonne idée. Voilà, comme ça, je serai pas seul. Pour une fois. Well, we ought to make clear at the outset, this is not a family find. Unless you're a very dysfunctional uh, family, right? <laughs> but, no, this is a film with a great deal of nudity, most of it from Victoria Abril, which I think very Nothing few men that, in the audience right. will complain <laughs> about. And it has sex with every imaginable combination of men and women and all of the different characters, one after another. But it keeps you guessing, because all of those relationships are complicated enough so that you can't tell what's going to happen next. And I think in a French sex farce, which this basically is, that makes it a pretty good one. Well, it kept me guessing, too. It kept me guessing, when's the fun going to start? When am I going <laughs> to like anybody here? And I didn't, really. I like Victoria Abril in her earlier film. She's always enchanting. She takes her clothes off here at a moment's notice, and there's nothing wrong with that, I suppose. But beyond that, the other characters were really dislikable and one-dimensional. And this, didn't you find that the story... See, I, did, I didn't wait, find that But without all. giving anything away, didn't you find the story took an unbelievable twist towards the end what? just to make something happen? It, it, I mean, again, really? it takes several surprising yeah. twists, but uh, that's part but of what I liked about it. But, you know, you said you didn't care about any of the characters. I think Alain Chabat, who plays the philandering husband, does a very good job yeah. because he, you start off, he is a complete cad and a jerk. But, they but you end up sympathetic. But you end up with sympathizing him. with him because with him because he actually suffers quite a bit. And the same with Joanne Velasco when she first comes on, she's a tender-hearted but tough-talking lesbian who drives a van with a Hare Krishna I paintings on it. And, and the point about her is that at first you don't see why anybody could be attracted to her. But she, who directed the movie and wrote it, is so warm and so winning ultimately that I think she wins you over as a character too. I think she's a, a more too. interesting director and writer than she is as an actress. Her character doesn't really go anywhere, and the development that it finally takes is so awful the wall <laughs> and so bizarre that it was left me it left me wondering saying look I paid all this attention to you and I'm getting no payoff that's why uh, I didn't the thing like is it. I don't think you look at something like this is it believable is it no, real but you it's want a something comedy to it's a comedy is it is it surprising does it have a few laughs yes it does I think people who are looking for a French sex farce will get a few chuckles and not a little bit me. of titillation out of this not one for me well now we turn to the family fine section of our show where we are not recommending French twist. Instead, we're recommending a terrific new film featuring some of Hollywood's biggest and most glamorous superstars, including Miss Piggy, Kermit the Frog, and Fozzie Bear. They're all part of the fun as the Muppets take on Robert Louis Stevenson's classic Treasure Island. And here, two ship's cabin boys, Jim Hawkins and the great Gonzo, meet one of the most famous characters in all of literature, nicely played by Tim Curry. Long John Silver, at your humble service. But we're just cabin boys, Mr. Silver. Long John to his friends. And believe me, lad, a friend you can trust is worth his weight in gold. There's many a dark-hearted scoundrel in these ports. What do you mean, pirates? Shh. Pirates? Oh, 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 that's rich. Pirates? What an imagination. Give me a cracker. Allow me to introduce my pet lobster, Polly. Pieces of eight! Pieces of eight! <laughs> On their way to the Caribbean to search for pirate treasure, the ship and the sailors are stuck in the doldrums as the Muppets and their rough, tough human counterparts give new meaning to the old phrase, a motley crew. I got cabin fever! I've got the tears! Cabin fever! I got cabin fever! It's burning in my brain! I got the cabin fever! It's driving me insane! We got cabin fever with flipping our bandanas. Been stuck at sea so long that we have simply gone bananas. 
When they finally reach Treasure Island, they find that it's inhabited by a tribe of ferocious warthogs who worship a gorgeous queen and one-time pirate played by one of the movie industry's most charismatic stars who is, unfortunately, something of a ham. Bonsoir, mes amis. <laughs> Come, Flaubert. Friend. <laughs> Tie them back in their stakes! Boy, Miss Piggy really cuts the bacon, doesn't she? And did you hear the, the rumors that off-camera she was having an affair with Babe? It's unbelievable. <laughs> but, you know, I, I like this Don't film. Spoil it. This film has a lot of hip references, so parents won't be bored. It's not just your bland, happy little kids comedy. It was co-written by Jim Hart, who wrote Hook and Dracula and Frankenstein. And <laughs> so it's much different an, films, yes, right. Yes, but it's got an, an, a kind of an adult uh, perspective, well, too, it, and everybody is wonderful it, here. It, it does. This is one of those great family pictures which, where kids will enjoy the Muppets, and, and, mm -hmm. but parents will enjoy it even more because it is hilarious. And, you know, one of the things about it is this is the second film by Brian Hansen, the heir mm -hmm. to the Hansen Empire, uh, that tries to adapt a literary classic. Last time they did uh, The Muppets' Christmas Carol, and there they, they tried yeah. to make it both a this little one, bit funny this one's and better. also, yeah, but also have the uplift and the sentiment of the original. Here, they just went off the charts, made it zany. They don't have a lot of respect for Robert Louis Stevenson, but it is so funny and so inventive, I think people are going to love it. Do you know what else they did that's very difficult to do? They integrated the Muppets with the human characters in sort of a believable way, but they never took it seriously. <laughs> you talk about the great Gonzo. They keep referring to him, and they don't know what kind of an animal he is, and they keep saying, well, whatever, because we don't know what he's a Gonzo. But, but, and that I love. That's an aspect But the I human animals the in this picture are also terrific. Billy Conley, the very great Scottish comic, plays uh, Billy Bones in in the in the inn and, where and Jim Tim Hawkins. And Tim Curry starts. is a very good uh, Long a very, John very, very Silver. Good Long John Silver. You know, this is, really is one of the character. indestructible parts. There've been great Long John Robert Silvers Newton. in the part. Robert Newton, of course, Wallace Beery in mm -hmm. the 1930s. Charlton Heston yes, did it he did. brilliantly recently. But Tim Curry is right up there with them, and he performs this great musical number that sounds a little bit like Gilbert and Sullivan. But the seven musical numbers here, written by the Wild Man songwriting mm -hmm. team, are terrific. Big They're production Oscar nominees numbers here. and good quality photography and location shots. I think it's one film that is not only appealing to kids, it's for whole families and parents. Even if you don't have kids, I think you'll like this film. Well, now to see...